awareness with God, but there is a depth in your relationship with God that the Lord would like to take you to. He doesn't just want you to have head knowledge. He wants you to have heart knowledge. All right? So then we're going to pick up Luke 5 and 1. This is Jesus with crowds everywhere. He's trying to speak to them. They're crowding him. He has to create a way so they can all see him. So, so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, he stood up by the lake of Gennesaret, saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them. They were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. He sat down, taught the multitudes from the boat. So Jesus essentially made a pulpit, made a platform so people could see him. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Okay? So he's saying, look, do what I say. And Simon answered to him, he's like, you know, I know you know preaching and demon casting outing and healing sick mother-in-laws and healing sick people on my porch, but I'm a professional fisherman. Me and, me and, like, I'm on the Bass Pro circuit. I got the Bass Pro hat. I have, all the, I have all the lures, I have all the colors. I know everything about fishing. Simon, launch out in the deep and de- let down your nets for a catch, verse five. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, <laughs> you're mistaken. We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, if you demand it at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. This is more than what they anticipated. This is uncommon results that only God could provide for somebody as experienced as Simon Peter was with fishing. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. So they began, uh, they came and filled both the boats and they began to sink, okay? So this is the verse I want you to pick up on, verse eight. At this point, Simon Peter realizes there's more to this man Jesus than just neat tricks. Verse eight says, when Simon Peter saw the net and the fish, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man. This is a moment of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to say in verse nine, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid from now on you'll catch men. This story breaks, this interaction with Jesus breaks Simon Peter down to a moment of conversion. Everybody that has been shared with the message of Jesus needs to come to a moment of conversion. Where you surrender your life and say, I am a sinner, you are God, I need you. Every person, the Bible says, has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We sin by the things we do, and we sin by the things that we do not do and refuse to do. We are sinners. Sin is sin, sin. We sin all the time. We're sin factories. We're sin manufacturers. We're sin, we're sin venture capitalists. We're sinners. And so that's how Simon Peter was. But when he saw a miracle in the context of his livelihood, in the context of his fishing boat, he was changed. But he wasn't changed before that. Here's, here, Jesus came to his house, healed his mother-in-law. He's unchanged. Jesus heals the sick from all over his neighborhood in Galilee. Simon Peter is unchanged. He watches the demon-possessed people be delivered on his front porch, and he is unchanged. But when Jesus got into his boat, when Jesus entered his workplace, when Jesus got intertwined in his life, that's when he was like, oh, hold on a second. I'm a sinful man. Up close, that up closeness, when he had his hands involved in the miracle, it just changed his life. The message I want you to know, and this really relates to small groups, God truly changes us by involving us. God truly changes us by involving us. I am concerned. Too many people are religious spectators. Too many people come to church and watch worship and watch preaching. And thank God for the online services we're able to do, but we're raising up a generation of watchers. We are in the church to engage our Savior in worship and praise. This is spiritual. It's spiritual. So, uh, God will do his deepest work in your life 
when you not only allow him to work in you, but you allow him to work through you. I want God not just just to work in me, to fix me. I want him to work through me to help others. Anybody feel that way? This is not just about me, okay? I, I think that all of us need to get rid of the idea that bless me, help me, fix me, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Some of the best ways you'll get blessed, some of the best ways you'll get helped, some of the best ways you'll get fixed is by using your life as a sacrifice to help somebody else. The Bible says the one that waters, amen. The Bible says the one that waters is watered himself, meaning that you pour out of your little spigot and something comes down from heaven on top of you. I know it's God's grace that saves us. And we know that his, his love saves us, his mercy saves us. And I'm not talking about getting to heaven here. I'm talking about coming to a place in your life when you're changed here and now in the way you look at God and the way that you look at yourself. This doesn't happen by you spectating. This happens through you participating. Yes. Peter was a participator. I'm, I'm sorry. He was, a, he was a spectator to the demons, the sickness, the fever, and the mother-in-law. He was a participator to the miracle of the net. And the miracle of the net and the fish changed him. And so there's some amazing things you'll never see in your life until you are an active participator with God.